Hey guys, Andy here from Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. I hope you're all doing well. So, a um, bit of a different video this time. So, I got to thinking because I've been using uh, little glass, uh, coloured glass beads, I suppose you'd call them, on Timo on the inside of my blooms um, and things like that, just to create a pretty centre or a different effect. Again, with the geodes, I know you can get lots of different sizes of crystals and things like that. And it got me to thinking, a little pot like this, which, which might do me, I don't know, five bloom centres, costs around about three or four pounds, even on Timu. If you're going in a hobby shop, you're probably looking at 10 to 15 pounds for a little pot that big. So it got me to thinking, is there a way that we can create them um, for free and also use up some projects um, that haven't quite gone to plan? So that's what this video is about. And let's get straight to it. So you can probably already guess the idea at the minute. Um, you will need a few things for this. So what I'm trying to do is create smaller and larger crystals, I suppose, to put into my resin pieces um, and hopefully not cost a lot of money. Now, uh, you're probably going to need a coffee for this one, so make sure you've got a drink. And you're going to need some tin snips. Now, the problem is this, this coast, for example, was quite a thick one. Um, there's no way a pair of tin snips is going to get through that. You might be able to snip a few smaller bits off the edges, Ugh, but that's about it. And I'm reasonably, I think, strong with my hands. Um, and these tin snips you can get off Amazon. Uh, I think they're about eight quid. I'll put a link in the description for you as well. Um, but there's no way I'm going to be able to chop through anything this sort of thickness with these. Or is there? So, the secret here is resin, when it gets warm, it goes flexible and bendy. Um, and as you can see, I wasn't particularly happy with this coaster bloom that I did, but look at what it creates. Um, almost little crystals, and I'm quite happy with the colour colours in there. I've got some pinks, some blacks, and some clear. Now, all you're going to need for this and it's a good job you've just made a coffee because the spare water from the kettle, boiling water, and just put it in there for a second. Make sure it covers the, uh, the resin. Now it's not gonna take long. It's probably gonna take, I don't know, about a minute, but just be careful when you're doing this as well, guys. I don't want people burning themselves and then blaming the video. But within a minute or so, the resin goes almost gummy. Um, and again, with these bigger pieces here, you can always, once you've got them to that size, you can always just do that and then cut them in smaller sizes. Now, if you were very pedantic, you could separate these all into separate colors, or you could even create uh, some of your own if you wanted to, if you've got a particular color scheme in mind. Personally, I like the variety, and I think things like this, for example, if I filled a frog mold, which normally takes about four ounces of resin with these, I'm only going to end up needing around about two ounces of resin uh, to actually fill that frog. And I might do that as an experiment at the end of this video just to show you. Um, but you're saving on how much resin you're going to need and you get a really cool effect because when resin touches resin, all of these like crystal images that you can see here where it it doesn't look particularly smart it looks like shattered glass but that will just go crystal clear so the clear bits you won't even see and all you'll see is these little bits of color um, around the clear resin which i think is a really cool effect so um, that's just one use of them again you can use them for your scents in your blooms you might want to get them a little bit smaller for that or you can use them for geodes as well and the great thing is a, it's free if you can spend the time to actually do it, and B, you're using up a piece that you're not particularly happy with. So I'm just going to take this one now, have a look at it, and see if it's about there. Look at that, flexible. And that was not flexible at all a couple of seconds ago. And now, if I use these tin snips, even though this is really thick, it cuts through it a bit like jelly. Um, and yes, it's going to take you some time, um, but it's a great way of A, saving money, and B, I think, just using up those pieces that you're not entirely happy with. And within a few minutes, 
you, you're going to have enough for a bloom center if that's what you want or what I would probably do is spend a couple of hours doing it getting rid of some pieces that I'm not happy with making enough so that I don't have to make any more for a few months but it literally it goes like a hard jelly um, and once these dry out again they go rock solid again so you're going to get those crystals um, in the smaller pieces I'm trying to do this one a little bit smaller chunks just so that you can see but again you can do it as big or as small as you like because these tin snips as I say they will cut through it now now it now now they've heated through and gone flexible and do as many as you want and with this particular project I actually had four coasters that I wasn't happy with so I could get an awful lot of free glass crystal like beads I suppose for the centers of my blooms or for any geode projects that I might want to do uh, or I can just use the bits if I want to to backfill any molds use half the resin um, put some chameleon powder around it and fill it with black and you won't even see these then um, but it's completely up to you what you want to do I just thought it was a useful tip and a useful trick stops us wasting those pieces that haven't gone particularly right um, and it gives us a new product to use in our resin you know and I actually quite like as I say this this multicolored effect that I've created here um, and obviously you've got to be a little bit cautious when you do it because you don't want bubbles in all your work but it saves money because you're not going to have to buy these glass pieces anymore um, and as I say it doesn't take a lot of effort it just takes a little bit of time and if they start getting hard again just put them back in the boiling water for a couple of minutes but you can see already within the space of this video I've got probably another enough to do another two blooms and just be a little bit careful they do fly everywhere when you cut them um, so that's why I tend to use this big silicone tray to hopefully catch them in otherwise you find them all over your floor and absolutely everywhere but again this color scheme that I've got on these coasters is mainly clear and black with little bits of pink if you didn't want the multicolored variety you can simply just snip off where the black is and keep the black separate if that's what you want to do and then I've got the clear bits with the bits of pink in that I can use in a separate project if that's what I want to do but I actually quite like the variety of the colors and again just keep snipping it until you're happy simple as that so what I am going to do in fact is just do a quick experiment um, with I've got a frog uh, a frog mold I've not done a frog for a while so I'm going to mix up two ounces of resin normally I mix up four ounces for a frog and see if by filling it with these crystal pieces that we've just made I can use half the resin and get a really cool effect so let me know what you think in comments guys if you're liking the content on the channel as well do me a favor spend two seconds completely free just click that subscribe button give it a thumbs up give it a share if you want and put something in comments but hopefully you found this useful just as a, another way to reuse those projects that haven't gone particularly well and get a new product to use in our resin. And again, just to give you a close up, look at those. I think they're gonna look amazing just suspended in resin, those different colors. So I've not got my frog mold <laughs> ready. Uh, it's actually got another frog in it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just to show you, I mean, this starfish mold here normally holds, I don't know, about uh, just over an ounce of resin, but I just wanna show you the effect um, and mix up, as I said, a tiny little bit of um, resin and mix it with these beads to uh, see what effect we can get. So. Um, I'm quite excited actually because I've got some paper cups through just to save on waste so again got those off Amazon um, I think there was 300 in a box for about 10 pounds and I just thought you know what it saves using those little plastic cups as well um, and when I'm doing small projects like this I'm not going to need a lot of resin um, so these are just the espresso size cups I think they hold about four ounces um, but I think they'll be really useful for me um, so all I'm going to do is mix up some resin. I'm gonna get some of those um, little, I suppose, crystals you'd call them that we've just made in a separate cup. And then we're gonna fill 
this starfish mold just to show you the effect more than anything else but as I say it probably reduces the amount of resin you're going to need by half so I reckon whew, probably a quarter of an ounce will fill this starfish now um, so again we're going to see so here we go guys and I'm literally I think I'm just going to do a squirt of each resin I'm going to use my standard one-to-one uh, -one resin for this make sure you're gloved up make sure that you've um, got a respirator on as well for this and literally that is one square of the hard nut one square of the epoxy and actually normally that would be a little bit short for a mold this sort of size but I think we're going to get away with it. I'm not going to put it in the debubbler for this either because I just want to show you the effect of these crystals more than anything else. So again, just giving it a stir around. Going to do it quite slow this time as to not introduce too many bubbles. And we might get some bubbles in this because of the fact of all these tiny little particles. So what I'm going to do is once it's mixed, I actually want to cover these in the resin first. And that should reduce the amount of bubbles that we're going to get. And then put a small layer into this starfish mold. Um, there we go. That is pretty mixed already. And that's the great thing when you're not mixing a large amount. So I'm going to put a tiny bit into this starfish mold. Um, then I'm going to mix the rest in with these crystals until I've got the effect that I want. Pour that in there. And then we're just going to let it set. So it's pretty straightforward process, but I think it will give us a cool effect and it will give us something useful more to the point out of a project that's gone wrong, um, hopefully. So I'm pretty happy that's all mixed up now. As I say, for this project, I'm not going to put it through the debubbler because I don't think it's going to have a, a massive impact, whether it does have a few bubbles or not, because of all these crystals that we're putting in. So as I say, tiny bit of this going in the center and up those legs, just to, I suppose, give it something to slide into. There we go, and that's that. And now I'm just gonna mix in a decent amount of these. I could keep some separate if I wanted to, um, just to some resin separate just to pour on the top, but I don't think I'll need to. And as, as you can see, I'm just mixing it all around to create sort of a paste with those crystals that we've just made. And then I'm literally gonna fill my mold. So dead straightforward. You might get a bit messy when you do this, but it's all part of the fun. And the great thing is with it being that these, these are already coated, they should actually still try and self level out. And we should get a mix of those clear, those pink bits and the black bits, hopefully. And make sure you're not pressing on your mold because with these handmade molds, you could damage them if you press down. So just be conscious of that and be a little bit careful when you're putting them in. But as you can see, no particular order. I'm just placing them in, making sure that I've got some in each leg. Like so. And these are quite chunky bits, but you could do it smaller if you wanted to. Just depends how patient you are. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an awful lot of patience. Um, especially with my resin projects, I literally want to get them in and get them demolded. And the other thing is with this particular mold is with it being a handmade mold, you can't actually uh, torch it or use alcohol or anything like that. But you want to make sure that all your pieces are fully submerged in that resin and aren't coming above the surface of the mold. So just gently moving things around so it all fits in nicely. I've got a couple of smaller bits like this one and I can see a bit of a gap in a leg, I'm just gonna put it in. Same with this one, um, bit of a thicker piece, but do you know what, I think it's gonna give us a really cool effect. And you can see there's quite a few bubbles in there and that's because of all of these little pieces. But once it's cured, I don't think that will actually matter. I think we'll still get a really cool effect. So I think for me, that is about full. If anything, I've slightly overfilled it. So we're just going to leave that to cure now for 24 hours. Um, and you can see, look, I've still got some resin left because of how many pieces we used. Um, so I'm actually going to put those into a, a pendant, I suppose. I've still got some of these pieces as well. So I'm going to add some more to that and just see what they look like in a pendant. Why not? I've already mixed the resin 
And you know me, I don't like to waste anything. So yeah, I'm just having a look actually. I'm just weighing up if there's enough there to do a teddy bear. Um, I don't know is the answer. Um, so I'm just gonna play it safe, I think, and just do a standard pendant to give us an idea of what these are gonna look like. So I'm just gonna use, I don't know, this square one here as an example. And again, just getting enough of these in so that it covers the mold, but hopefully they don't come over the surface too much. If they do, this particular mold, I don't think it'll matter. Um, I think it'd give it quite a good textured sort of geode effect. Morning guys, and we're back, and it is time to demold these pieces. Just made with those, um, I suppose, chopped up pieces of resin that didn't work out. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the pendant first and just see what it's come out like. There we go, look at that. And I think it's, I don't know, I hope you'll agree, but I think it's just a really cool effect. There's different shapes, there's different colors coming through. Um, so you've got the pinks in there, you've got the blacks in there, and the clear bits have gone completely clear again, as you can see. So for me, I think that's a success, and I think it's a really, really cool look. Um, and I've even got this slightly textured side on the back, um, which again, to fix that, I could quite easily dome it. But for the purposes of the video, just wanted to show you what effect that makes with nothing but clear resin. Really cool. And you'll probably see it better against um, a white background actually, rather than the black. So just gonna get a piece of white paper just to show you. So there we go. Really, really cool effect. And obviously you can have as many different colors in there, pieces in there, different shapes and sizes, but I actually just like the variety that you get. So that is that one. And then now for the starfish. And I'm loving how these, these, these come out of this mold. Wow. <laughs> so again, got a couple of tiny bubbles in there, but not too many. Um, and that's just because of all of those bits that you incorporate. You're always going to get that. But absolutely love that. And it's just something that's unique. It's different and it'll be different with every piece that you sort of repurpose as well. So um, really liking that. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how to use those projects that don't quite work out. If you've liked it, do me a favor, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.